KRXA you're listening to right now. It is November 29th, a Tuesday, and we're going to mix things up a little bit, maybe talk to somebody about a topic that we haven't delved into before. I love to learn new things, and certainly our guest, Eric Rainoff, has already taught me some stuff off the air. I hope you'll find this interesting as well. We're talking to Eric Rainoff. He's the Outreach Director for Expert Bail. Some people call them bail bondsmen. We'll talk to Eric about why the name change, why bail bond agent is actually more accurate than bail bondsman in a bit. We're going to talk about what bail agents do. Good morning, Eric Rainoff. Good morning, Hal. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. And that's the best way to start off. Can you give us a thumbnail sketch of the role of a bail bond agent in the criminal justice system? Yeah, and I think it's, 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 it's something that's probably a lot of people don't understand because getting a bail bond is not something anyone ever really plans for or, you know, you have in the back of your mind of, well, if this ever happens, this is what I'm going to do. And what, what, what typically is a bail agent does is, uh, you know, someone is arrested or accused of a crime, they get arrested, um, they'll get booked into, you know, go through the booking process and background checks are done. And then eventually a either judge or magistrate or someone sets a bail amount. Now, what a bail agent will do is it'll facilitate that process of that person getting out. So say, for example, if a $10,000 bond is set for that person, that person will pay a premium, much like in any, any other insurance policy that you'd have, to the bail agent, and then, then they can get released. And uh, the bail agent's job pretty much in that, in that process is to ensure that that person shows up for court. And um, in doing so, um, you know, just helps kind of the criminal justice system kind of keep moving along. And if, of course, you have to put up that money, you said off the air, generally the premium or the payment that has to be made for that bond is somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. So for a $10,000 uh, bail, the, uh, the, the, the criminal defendant or the family or some responsible person for that criminal defendant will have to pay the bail bond agent somewhere between 1000 and $1,500 dollars. And then the agent gives that money, pays that money to the court with the understanding if the defendant appears for trial, the bail bond agent can ca- collect that money back. Actually, the, the money is actually paid directly to the bail agent as, as basically a, a premium on that insurance policy that he's kind of uh, issuing with, with him, the defendant, in the court. So if that person doesn't show up, so the money goes to the bail agent. If that person doesn't show up for court, a certain time period uh, the bail agent has to get that person and, and remand it back into custody, or that bail agent is then responsible for the full $10,000 to the court. I see. So the court doesn't collect the money up front. The co- court will only demand that money from the bail agent if the uh, if the defendant does not appear and is not uh, is not remanded within a, su- a suitable time. Exactly. All right. Tell us about alternatives. Now you're talking to to me. You've been on NPR. You've been on other shows as well to discuss the benefits of the system of this particular private form of bonding. Uh, there are other forms as well. Yeah, um, you, you have various. Uh, you know, uh, as we talked earlier, you know, bail is an, an interesting animal because it is so different from state to state, and even within states, um, you, you, within county, the county level, it's it's very different. Um, but I'll, I mean, I'll try to talk at the, at the highest level. Um, typically, you have the you know private surety bail um, is what kind of what we do, commercial surety, and then you also have um, you know government sponsor programs, you know, pretrial release uh, programs, which initially were created back, I believe, back in the '60s or '70s to uh, help out indigents, those that maybe were uh, arrested for uh, minor offenses that you know maybe had an alcohol problem or a drug problem or someone that was just which truly didn't have any ties or didn't have any, any money to get out. And they would get out through these programs and get, a, get the help they need and, um, you know, try to get them back on their feet. Um, and, you know, what, what happens now is as these programs have gotten um, maybe even moved beyond that initial scope of what they were intended to do, um, you know, a lot of people now becomes kind of a, an option where a pretrial services person who, you know, sits in the jails or adjacent to jails, you know, will conduct an interview and provide input to the judge when they're setting bail on whether a person should have a bail amount sent or be released through one of these programs. You know, what we've found is people that are released through these programs, um, what we call a failure to appear is when they don't show up for court, that that rate of failure to appear rate is much higher than those that are actually released on commercial bail through a bail agent, through a, a private in, uh, insurance product. All right, what does, and why is that? Why does the presence of the bail agent in the mix increase the likelihood that the criminal defendant will appear for trial? 
I mean, I, I think you almost have to put your mind, in, 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 put yourself into the mind of the defendant, where it's like, okay, well, if I'm say, say I've committed a crime, I've been released, but I'm going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm let out on um, through one of these programs or through a bail agent now. If I'm that defendant, I say, well, if I show up for court, I'm going to be found guilty and I'm going to do jail time. Well, if I'm going out through one of these government programs and I know that no one is going to come get me, if I if I fail to appear, I know that no one's going to come get me. That basically a warrant is going to be issued, and then it's going to be up to the the local law enforcement to try to track me down. And they're too taxed to really go and go after these bench warrants. So until I'm stopped for something else or I commit another crime, I'm I'm probably not going to you know show up for court or, or, or even be concerned about it. If I have a bail agent and I go through a bail process and a bail bond is issued, I know my family's on the hook, potentially, my girlfriend, my coworkers, whoever is, who has kind of stood up and, and vouched for me and, and, and indemnified that bond, um, that person's on the hook for that money. And if I don't show up, I know I'm going to be you know, hurting that person. At the same time, I know that bail agent's going to come after me to 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 find me and get me back to to, to court. So, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm that defendant and I know that no one's going to get come after me, I'm probably more likely not to show up. And if I know someone is going to come back to me or I'm going to hurt a family member, you're probably more likely to show up. Eight thirteen. You're listening to the KRXA Morning Show. Eric Rainoff with us. He is with Expert Bail. You can go to expertbail.com if you want some more information about this topic. Now, we're using the term, Eric, bail agent. If you watch old movies, the term is almost invariably bail bondsman. You told me, I asked you, is there a a non-gender specific term? You said the preferred term now is actually bail agent, not bail bondsman. Why is that? Well, it's it's it, it's very interesting because if you look at the evolution of this industry, I mean, and it's easy for us to say, and it's actually kind of cool. We have a conference room here that has photos. Our companies have been around for about eighty years, um, and we actually have one company that's been around for over a hundred years. But it, you look at these photos of um, dinners that we've had with bail agents over the years, and these old black and white photos of of these large tables of just you know men, and then he watches they evolve year over year. Slowly but surely, more and more women are in these photos to the point now where, um, you know, some of the current statistics show that more than 50% of bail agents are women. So if you begin to think about identifying these individuals as bail bondsmen, it's a little bit of a, a misnomer in that sense. So bail bond agent seems to be, you know, probably a better way to refer to them as. Isn't this a dangerous job? Uh, you know, uh, not to say anything uh, negative about women, but generally men are bigger physically and stronger physically. That is uh, the major physical, obviously, difference between them. But you're saying women can go out there into perhaps tough areas, go after big, strong men, and bring them back to court? You know, I think that comment is exactly why we created Expert Bail, this national brand, is to challenge that misperception. Because I think there's a misperception out there that there's a difference between a bail bond agent and someone who does fugitive recovery or a bounty hunter, as most people refer to them as in reality television and stuff like that. The cases that I think are probably promoted and perpetuated by Hollywood and the media and in movies and in television of that rough and tumble guy in leather pants with gold chains running through the streets in a bulletproof vest, that's not the most, it's actually a very small minority of instances in this business. The reality of the time is someone sitting in an office talking to family members, getting information, underwriting an insurance policy. You know, if you're thinking about creating a reality television show, some, watching someone at a desk and an insurance agent probably isn't the most exciting show in the world. So, I mean, the reality of the business is that it really isn't, it's a very small minority that you're, you end up having to go get someone. And most of the time, you knock on the door and they overslept. Or uh, it, it really isn't as dramatic as television portrays it to be do, and, 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 and not as dangerous. Do bail bond agents generally carry uh, firearms? Bail bond agents, um, uh, for the most part, I, I, I mean, it's hard for me to answer. I would say that they, they don't, but some of them do fugitive recovery. Fugitive recovery agents um, will carry it for their own protection, but a lot of times, you know, you, you're bringing things like pepper spray and things like that that you, you know you don't want to, you never want to get into a, a, a physical altercation or have it come to, to any, anything violent at all, and it rarely does. All right, eight sixteen. We've only got a couple more minutes left. For a fascinating for me discussion with Eric Grainoff. I hope you're enjoying it as well. We're talking about bail bond agents. Can you make a decent living doing this? You said some bail bond agents actually do other work as well. It's really a 24-hour position. I mean, the phone's going to ring all the time. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility in how hard you want to work. So I think you know, there's bail agents I think that do well that work a lot and are very uh, aggressive in how they want to, the hours they want to work. And I think there's bail agents that you know, will, will, will not work as aggressively. I, so, I mean, it really provides flexibility. 30 seconds. Can you tell us why you think the system is good for victims of crimes? 
when someone's out on release and you have a bail agent making sure, along with family members, that circle of love that we talk about with Aunt Jenny, her house is up, or the coworkers, when you, someone is out there, they're going to show up for court because the bail agent is going to get them to show up for court. And when they show up for court, that means they're not out there committing more crimes. And in essence, the victim of the crime that they were accused of or, or committed, that victim is getting a chance at justice when that person shows up for trial. So by bail agents, by ensuring that appearance, in essence, we're ensuring that victims get a chance at justice. Thanks, Eric Raynoff.